So as you read this history, know that it will contain no single lie. May I burn in hell if I speak false. I, I, for some reason, that figure is so malleable. I don't like he means something for so many people, and for some reason, his mythology has been sort of rewritten and rewritten to sort of fit whatever agenda you kind of want him to be. Um, which is why there's been so many films about him and so many books. And actually, I think the first film ever made, live action film ever made, was about Nick Kelly. Um, so for some reason, he, he he's become this. Um, Sort of story of us that we 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 keep sort of coming back to rightly or wrongly um and and that was what was really what i was really interested in as to kind of why we seem to kind of find identity in him and um also what really is his story and i think sort of peter carey created a completely fictional kind of point of view of ned and you know with within it that idea of him writing to his daughter trying to kind of make sure that his history was something that was sort of recorded uh, and not stolen. There was a kind of irony to all that that I, that I think sort of says a lot about us as, a, as Australians. My dear child, I write to you now. So you do not go to confuse fiction for fact and view your father in an unsavory light. I, I wasn't really interested in doing another um, sort of classical kind of biopic of, 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 of Kelly. I was much more interested in somehow this character. And when I read the book, this character just felt very modern and familiar, um, that, that I thought there was a kind of really great way I I into something that had been kind of done before quite a, quite a few times. You're not now. You go out there and show the world. Justin has a really wonderful approach with actors where he gives each of his lead actors a manifesto of what he thinks that you should read and watch and try and taste and drink and smell and look at and immerse yourself in in order to prepare for your role. And that is, is your own homework to do, but it is so, it becomes so collaborative. Mm. And one of the things that he got the gang to do was to pick up an instrument each and form a band and write as many songs as they could to perform at a uh, gig in a music venue in Melbourne unrelated to the film to an audience of about 350 punters. <laughs> and, um, and in that process, George and Earl and, and Sean and Louis each picked up an instrument and wrote eight amazing punk songs while um, Ben Corbett and Orlando and I did some heavy, heavy some, punk dance moves in, a, in amongst <laughs> these kind of really uh, organic and creative space. And that kind of punk spirited, youthful gang was formed in mm. that, in the creation of that music. So here's mm. a pretty profoundly um, creative director to kind of get that mm. bond happening so deeply mm. and so quickly. But what you were saying about the, the spirit of it is in terms of like what you're saying about his historical, looking at historical figures, is that he's, especially with Ned Kelly in Australia, is so kind of revered as an idea and as a legend that often people are kind of quite scared to touch the history, like, you know, is the beard the right length? Is the hair on the right side? Like, did this happen first? Which, you know, everyone is quite, is, is um, yeah, treats it with such reverence that in a way you're kind of bound by that. And he was like, let's just make it in the spirit of it. Like these were some angry, ambitious, confused young men. Let's, let's like have at it. Let's make the film that they would have made rather than try and paint by, you know, chronologically exactly what happened. Because also the film's about, it might not have happened like that. <laughs> who's to say that it did and who's to say that it didn't? Um, so I think his understanding of the spirit of it rather than a kind of, you know, historical accuracy kind of completely cracks it all open. There is not a man born who could have the patience to suffer the injustice I have. 
I never saw photos of the boys in dresses. There was a there's there's been a painting, a documentation of Steve Hart, one of the guys in the gang with dresses, and then Peter elaborated on that and sort of created this whole kind of world where um, the the gang were kind of wearing dresses because of the son of Steve, Red Kelly, Ned's father's kind of rebel gang. Um, but I I loved that image. Like I and and I there definitely is a kind of provocation there on what Australian masculinity is. And, uh, you know, you, you do see like on Mad Mondays with footballers kind of, you know, these big buff burly kind of guys suddenly dressing up in dresses and, you know, rolling around with each other. There's something going on there that, you know, always fascinated me. And I think there, there was sort of something in the book that was a kind of provocation about what it is to be an Australian male. And, and the dress is definitely kind of, um, you know, poked around at that in a, in a really interesting way. My boy. I hadn't actually seen the Babadook. Have you seen it yet? No, I still haven't. <laughs> oh, no. I know. I watched 1917. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> no, I'd heard a lot about Essie, though. I'd heard a lot about Essie's theatre. Oh, had you? Oh, no, yeah. I had, right. seen, I had seen George in um, Captain Fantastic and thought he was pretty amazing. And... Um, I, I had the privilege of actually getting to see his auditions too. But uh, George see, came out to Australia quite early, yeah. like months and months before we started, and to um, immerse down. himself <laughs> in Australiana and um, learn how to wood chop and yeah. uh, surf, yeah. um, both one of which, neither of which end up in the film. No. I don't think the surfing was ever meant to be in the film. <laughs> no, no, but we went on a big hike. We, yeah. got to know e- we got to know each other more than I think... Yeah. You know, it's funny, like, because I had I had heard of your work, but I I hadn't I kind of in a way like before we met, I got no excuse after we've met, but like <laughs> but at the time because like I wanted to meet us and then meet each other and then it was such an amazing process kind of, you know, getting to know each other and then sort of building the characters around that I kind of wanted to leave that pure because that felt so exciting. I know, but we also I think because um, we went bushwalking together, mm. I think um, I. Th- I think we've said to each other quite early mm. on, I was nervous too, but that we weren't meeting each other's character. Mm. We were meeting each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and whether, we'd, whether we'd be able to, um, act, you know, act our characters. I know. Uh, for whether, we'd, whether either of us would believe each other as our character if they really met the f- real person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny, that like, initial meeting. Yeah, yeah. Going, well, I should Ned's a bit tougher than I am, yeah, so maybe I should Ellen's be tough, Ellen's way but, tougher yeah, than yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're both really soft, basically. <laughs> 